First, I want to describe uh, that um, in former times I was more involved in speaking English, so I'm not sure if all will be so good uh, as um, uh, it could be. My personal involvement in the conflict to Yemen is I was a member of the European Parliament, as Didem described, from 2004 to 2009. And I was the vice president and then acting president of the so-called Gulf state delegation. And that means all Gulf states, including Yemen. It was always interesting because the name was Gulf states, including Yemen. And um, I personally visited uh, the last time Yemen in the, t in the year 2006. And as you know, 2006, it was the time of Mr. Saleh, um, the former president, which uh, later on played a special role in the conflict and was killed. Um, I met him, and um, I also met um, a lot of parliamentarians, because parliamentarian delegations have the main focus on meeting parliamentarians. And um, in this time, uh, one of the debates was how to bring the, the state, Yemen, together, because it's, before it was uh, two parts, as you know. So now we have uh, 2022, and um, we have a total other situation. Um, since um, a lot of years, there is going on a civil war. And I'm um, a little bit happy that we discuss not always the same war, uh, because uh, in Germany in the moment, there is one issue. There's one war, what is discussed, and it is necessary to discuss, and the uh, involvement in, of Germany in this war. Um, but it is something like all other things, all other wars are going behind the door. And so it's important also to have a look um, on the Yemen war. And um, I would call it a civil war with a, a big international participation. Um, we have in the moment now a ceasefire. Um, and I think it's a crucial moment for the conflict, what will happen? Um, is it possible to have this ceasefire as a possibility for, um, for negotiations? Or is it something that the um, fights will go on on the ground? Um, since 2014, um, the people in Yemen are suffering from this war. and. To say it very uh, clear, the United Nations say it's the greatest humanitarian catastrophe in our time. And that was something what I missed since now, that um, this should be described, that the situation in Yemen is terrible. And uh, when you read the, the different uh, reports from United Nations or other uh, states is absolutely uh, terrible for the, situa the situation for the people on the ground. Um, for example, um, in one of the reports it's written that 80% of the population is directly involved in the conflict and in the war. And um, the, the, the normal economic situation in a lot of parts of Yemen are no more possible. And um, special, the situation of the children is terrible. And you have the situation that um, a lot have not enough food. And um, it's a situation when it's descri uh, the description is um, it's the worst in the world. I think it's, uh, there are some other conflicts, you know. Um, so we should focus also on this. Um, 
Also, the so-called human rights situation is terrible. Um, that means that uh, special the people have no possibility uh, for political participation or something like this. It's uh, very hard uh, in this situation. Um, when we go back, how this situation um, takes place, um, the Houthi rebels um, go in the capital of Sana'a, 2014, in uh, military action, um, and the now former president, Mr. Hadi, in January 2015, um, called an international coalition to help, and um, then a coalition under the lead of Saudi Arabia um, started fighting against um, the Houthis, and uh, this, this is the so-called Saudi-led coalition, and this coalition is supported from a lot of Western states, uh, especially the United States and the uh, United Kingdom, uh, but also Germany, I will uh, come to this later. And when we see the situation, it's so that on the ground, um, the, um, the Houthi coalition um, get some, um, um, they, they, they um, uh, have some um, the land, they winning are some of the land in the same um, um, situation it was that there are also some other um, actors. And I think this is important to know that, um, especially in the south uh, of, of Yemen, there are um, other uh, groups um, which are described as uh, terrorist groups. And um, some of them are um, acting of their own interests. Um, nevertheless, all this war could be described as a proxy war, a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. It's not that that um, it's something like a puppy for Iran, the Houthis. It's a little bit co more complicated, um, but it is clear that uh, Iran supported them. And um, I would say, uh, when, you, when you see the situation, um, it's clear when you look to the geopolitical situation, um, this description of um, um, proxy war, I think, um, is the, the, the right description. And special Saudi Arabia um, has the interest that there is no other a group from an Islamic understanding, from other Islamic understanding um, than in Saudi Arabia. As you know, it's a Wahhabit uh, regime there. And um, what is interesting is that a lot of the states which have been involved in humanitarian help um, together with the United Nations go out um, and as you know, there was this situation, uh, the assassination of uh, Jamal Yashuki in the Saudi consulate in, in Ankara. And um, f f um, to this situation, um, also Germany supported directly um, the Saudi uh, coalition with war, uh, with, with weapons. Uh, since this time, there is a cut, and there is no more direct um, uh, weapon uh, um, spending to the Saudi uh, coalition. Um, what is important is that there are only a few countries still on the ground in Yemen, and um, 
I think it's good that the German government has decided not to go out. It's uh, always uh, on the ground, and it's also uh, make development cooperation also in the situation of war, because special then it's um, necessary. Um, some some um, description of the humanitarian situation. We have 3.6 million internal displaced person um, and 24 million out of total of around 30.5 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. And I think this describes a little bit uh, the situation. More than 20 million people do not have safe access to food and 14.4 million people need immediate assistance to ensure their survival and almost um, one, third billion, one third million children suffer from um, the special situation that they have not enough um, food. So it's the poor house of the Arab world because, you know, nearby there are very rich uh, um, states. And um, also in, in, in the time as I was visiting uh, Yemen, it was um, a very hard um, difference between Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Uh, I visited the border, I told before somebody, and um, it was a, a, a very high um, um, difference. Nevertheless, there are some voices of the civil society uh, very courageous, and um, they are um, try to make the situation public. We have some here. Uh, I'm I'm happy that um, they are still working. Um, as in in my time, as I visited uh, Yemen, it was also possible to have some meetings with different uh, groups. For me, very impressive a group of uh, women at the border to Saudi Arabia. Um, and um, they described the situation that Saudi men in this time bought women and married them for some days and used them and then uh, they go away. It was a terrible situation and um, they make public of this um, situation. So what will be next in, in the conflict? I think um, the solution is uh, not so easy because there are a lot of geopolitical interests and also local interests of the different groups. And um, nevertheless, it's necessary to have negotiations. And uh, these negotiations um, could be the situation that it's now because there is the ceasefire. And um, this should be used. Um, I believe uh, there should be, from the United Nations or other organizations, uh, direct um, um, initiative to, to have negotiations. Um, we will see when it will not work. Then my impression is that um, also the Houthi and also Saudi Arabia coalition will go on uh, with this war, and um, I believe uh, it's terrible for, for the people on the ground. I will describe a little bit um, what um, I'm a little bit involved in activities in the context of this uh, Yemen war. Um, uh, there is a center, it's called European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights. And um, this uh, European Center for Constitutional and Human Rights is um, uh, looking for war crimes and the involvement of um, different European and uh, Western states, especially Germany. And um, as I know, I was a former member of the Defense Committee of uh, the German Parliament. The, um, they sent Eurofighters, Tornados, uh, MK80, uh, um, that, that's our special bombs, uh, um, which are 
uh, used from the Saudi Arabian uh, uh, coalition um, and uh, there have been um, together with human rights organization, it's called Mwatana in, in um, Yemen, and, and try to bring this to the International Crime Court in December 2019. Um, and it's still going on. Very interesting to, to read the 350-page uh, uh, criminal complaint. Um, because I think it describes a little bit the situation <coughs> on the ground. And the same organization um, has made a case on, in, on a court um, because the, um, in, in Rammstein, in Germany, uh, they use um, this as a um, hub for a drone war. And it's one of the places uh, special uh, United uh, States use their drones, um, so they use it tr through Rammstein. And um, the court, it was interesting, in March 2019 decided that the German government has to uh, take action, that the United States respect the international law, law in using the Rams Rammstein airbase. Um, Nevertheless, we know there's still going on this uh, drone attacks uh, through the Rammstein Air Base. Um, and there's a special case. Um, in August 2012, it was an, uh, a man uh, named Faisal bin Ali Yaba, um, um, and, and parts of his family have been killed. And um, he goes uh, to the court, and um, then this decision um, was in this court. So um, I think the main message should be that there should be no uh, support from the Western states for the, the attacks, um, which are special, um, the, 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 the special the civil society and the civil uh, persons are in, on the ground are this one who suffering on this, and um, so this uh, could be one point that the uh, special the, the European or the, the Western or the special the German uh, role could be on the end. And my impression in uh, when we speak about this war is that. Um, it's clear that um, different uh, states uh, have clear interests, clear geopolitical interests. And um, my, my experience in the parliament was that, especially when there was some, some uh, state which are friends, then you don't speak about the human rights uh, violations and um, when it is uh, an enemy, you speak about. And um, I think it's wrong because it's necessary uh, to describe the situation so that um, always when there is a, a something against human rights, uh, you should say it. And um, we have the situation that on the ground, uh, both sides are clear. Um, um, are against uh, uh, human rights, um, and this should be also very clear uh, be named. And um, as I said, now there is a ceasefire. Um, in the media, as they say, the different parts of the conflicts are um, something like um, we don't want to continue the war. Um, I hope um, this is right, and we should make pressure um, that the ceasefire will be uh, to an agreement on the ground um, that the war ends, because special the civil um, civil uh, parts are suffering of this war. I thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Um, now we have lots of time. We had two politicians that kind of talked short. That never happens in real life. We just saw it <laughs> happening. Um, normally they take way more time. Anyhow, that means we have more time for discussion. Also, um, you can also obviously discuss with between each other um, if you heard any points earlier made. So um, is there anybody who wants to say something? Yes, okay, I'm going to start, Tabea, I'm going to start with women, because actually in our party, we always let women talk first. Um, you see? Yeah, to, we are fighting <laughs> for equality. Thank you. Um, so I'm Tabea Hoffmann, I'm German, <laughs> and I totally share your opinion. Um, I always love DDM's classes because of that. So I actually didn't know that the German government was involved in the Yemen negotiations at all besides supporting the Saudi um, coalition. So as you already said, we step back from that. So rather qu like a critical question, what are then our German interests now in these um, negotiations? Because I don't think that solving the humanitarian crisis is our, yeah, that's like, can you like say, all of them, maybe these interests. Is it also securing new natural resources or because we have strong partners and relations in the region, so why Yemen now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he he's, um, prefer his preference is me collecting the questions, so this is a diplomatic way, so you don't have to answer everything, right? Um, so you just collect the questions and then you go. Ich bin Alicia Lebseid, der Vorsitzende der Verein für eine neue Niemen hier in Berlin. Darf ich in Deutsch reden? Gerne. Weil ich kann nicht so gut Englisch. Warum? Ach so. Es kurze Frage an ihm auf Deutsch. Ja, ja. Ähm, man redet ähm, ganz selten hier in den Medien in Deutschland über das, was im Jemen passiert ist. Und wenn man darüber redet, dann redet man von der Sicht, äh, dass Saudi-Arabien Jemen angreift, obwohl das nicht stimmt. Weil wir Jemeniten wissen, was wir gelitten haben, bevor Saudi-Arabien in den Jemen ähm, oder in den Krieg teilgenommen hat, weil äh, Hadi die äh, verlangt hat. Ähm, Warum verbindet man das immer, wenn man in den, äh, von dem Krieg im Jemen redet, verbindet das sofort mit Saudi-Arabien? Wir haben ein Problem im Jemen, was von den Houthis verursacht wurde, worunter wir gelitten haben. Jahrelang wurden die Jemeniten getötet, wurden die Jemeniten ins Gefängnis geschickt, äh, Häuser wurden in die Luft gesprungen von den äh, Houthi-Milizen. Was haben die Medien hier in, in Europa äh, gezeigt? D der Krieg wird leider vergessen in, in den Jemen. Und ich hoffe, dass der pa Parlament auch die Houthis als äh, Terroristen nennt und bezeichnet, äh, bezeichnet so wie die anderen äh, Parlamente der Welt, die sie auch schon als Terroristengruppe bezeichnet haben. Vielen Dank. So I do a quick translation. I'm just going to summarize it. And um, if it's wrong, just uh, catch me and be like, no, this was wrong. Um, so he, he's, he's asking why uh, Saudi Arabia in German media is always portray portrayed as attacking um, Yemen, because he says in our experience, coming from the Yemen point of view, right, um, uh, there has been problems before, there has been bombing, there has been war before, so um, why is it that this narrative of Saudi Arabia attacking is always present in German media? He doesn't look unhappy, but uh, no. Okay, so um, there was another question. So I'm going to collect three, okay, and then you can decide which one you answer, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, to me, it's unclear what side or position uh, Germany takes. Does Germany fully support uh, the uh, Saudi elite coalition, uh, given the many crimes they have committed against the, uh, the Yemeni civilians? Um, I mean, there is a notion of support to Saudi Arabia by the West, uh, yet there are concerns and maybe an ideological conflict between Saudi Arabia and the West. Uh, is Saudi Arabia a friend or is it an ally? How do you classify Saudi Arabia? 
Okay, um, so Tobias, you start and then we can go for the next round. The last question, uh, I will start with the last question. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because um, the, the member of the parliament who is part of the um, government um, could answer this uh, question to you easier because um, in my op opinion, um, this government um, has Saudi Arabia as an um, ally and um, they send weapons and they support what Saudi, the Saudi Arabia uh, coalition um, is doing. Um, nevertheless, um, you, has, you have, um, I think it's something like a special German position, what is in a lot of conflicts. Um, you have also the situation that Germany is one of the states who is still on the ground with development projects. And um, when I'm looking um, all over the world, I'm seeing a lot uh, that um, Germany is doing something like this double, you, you would say when you have a conversation, double binding. Um, it's different messages which um, are, are done. Um, but this is clear, and this is a little bit a um, reaction to what you have said. Um, I believe that um, I would not say that it is only descript that the description as you has dis described that so the, because when Saudi Arabia is involved, it is uh, in the media. But it, for example, it's absolutely clear when there is a direct involvement of the government, this is something what is discussed. And you have the former government has decided to send no more weapons to states which are involved in the Yemen war. The funny thing was they have decided this, but at the end they have done it nevertheless. But um, they have decided in the, in the former coalition uh, um, agreement and um, in my impression, it's always when there is an involvement of the government, then it is something what is um, special in the media. It's not because, uh, um, for, for example, when you, you make an analysis of the situation, um, I would say, um, as I have said before, there is a clear um, um, acting against human rights of both sides. But it's not so easy, it's not, as you know, it's not both two sides, it's a little bit more complicated, uh, especially in the South, that there are always other groups are involved. Um, so um, in my impression, it's something like when there is an involvement of the German government that the medias are special um, looking on this. Um, in, it's easy when you see um, which governments call other groups terrorists. It's always they call them terrorists when they are um, totally uh, against their interests. For example, Turkey. Um, they say. Um, now in the negotiations about the NATO membership, um, PKK and I, um, IPG, IPG are terrorists. Nevertheless, IPG w was this group who fights against um, IS and was uh, successful. And uh, it was supported from the United States, for example. And so Turkey say they are terrorists, and the others say no, they are not terrorists. So it's something very easy to give something a stamp, they are terrorists. I think it's, um, for, for serious analysis, it's necessary to look what are they handling, what they are doing 
on the ground. And then you can make, um, they do this and this against human rights, they do this and this and, of, and in their fighting and, and so on. And in this, my analysis is clear. There are the Houthis on the ground which are, um, um, have direct violence of human rights. And there's also the Saudi Arabian coalition, which are um, with, their, with their bombing and with their uh, form of war, which are also um, against human rights. And so um, the, I think that when, when you have this analysis, um, it's serious because it's not looking away when um, somebody who is on, the, on your side uh, does something what is not not uh, not, not uh, what should what should they do? So, um, in my opinion, um, when I'm living here in Germany, I should care about the involvement. What is this government doing? The German government, and that's that's the reason, for example, why I'm foco focusing on the supporting of the bombing. Um, of the Saudi uh, coalition, because this is uh, war crimes, um, and the German government supports these war crimes, and I'm criticizing this. Nevertheless, I uh, make the analysis of the situation on the ground. It's uh, clear what, what I have described. I hope you understand my view. Question? Your question? What are the direct German interests? Um, in a lot of conflicts, um, my impression is that Germany's interest is to play, to be part of the of the game. Um, for example, I take a conflict Mali. You look on this, and you see. For example, France has direct economic interests, but Germany want to be part of the game. And in this case, I believe it's also something like this. And it's, it's something like um, the description of what is terrorism. And to say it very clear, that's a, a question of definition. And as you said, um, for, for me, some of the states make terrorist policy. And uh, you said Turkey, I think, uh, when I've seen, seen what they are doing in, the, in, the, in Syria, uh, that's true. So, um, the, and the interest in, the, in, in a lot of parts, it's not so that you can say there are some always saying there's a direct economic interest. I think, yes, in this uh, conflict, there is an, um, a part which is also clear economic interest. Because as you know, Saudi Arabia is one of the states which uh, give a lot of, um, of the oil. Um, and so there is clear, there is an uh, involvement. Um, and there uh, also is this part of uh, that there is a direct economic interest. And um, also that when, when, when we look to the conflict, um, that Saudi Arabia as a regime is one of the worst we have in the world. And um, I, I've, I've been there. I, I don't believe that a lot of people have been in Saudi Arabia. And um, what they uh, have on uh, death penalty, for example, um, it's uh, terrible high and all this. Um, so, but it is supported because it is um, one of the main suppliers in the in the part of uh, oil industry. So, thank you very much for um, being here. Um, thank you to the audience so far. 
Um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. I have to. Yes. I, I just heard we are running late, and I was like totally under a different impression. So it's all bla all blame on me, please, uh, for the for the timing. Um, that's okay. We are. We